I didn't really carry around anxiety in those early appointments as far as going to the doctor. The first one is the most exciting because that's when you get to hear the heartbeat and, and have that ultrasound done. But then of course we went back. They did another ultrasound and at that time it showed that the stomach was enlarged and that can be indicative of a more serious condition. We obviously became pretty worried because we could tell that things had suddenly gotten more serious. They told us it could be something called the duodenal atresia, and that requires surgery after birth. And they kind of mentioned in passing that one out of three times this occurs, the baby can have Down syndrome. When we went to see the perinatologist about five days later, as soon as he walked in, he said, this is a duodenal atresia, there's no doubt about it. And we're pretty certain your baby has Down syndrome. I remember asking the doctor, like, what are the odds that you're wrong? Mm -hmm. And I think at that moment, we, we were just kind of still, you know, going off of the hope that maybe, just maybe, possibly, it was a misdiagnosis. The next thing to do after that was to actually confirm it through a blood test. I was at work, I just pulled in to the parking garage and uh, Julie calls me on the phone and I could hear her crying on the other end. I knew then that the diagnosis was confirmed. Too. <sighs> Driving home was things just racing through my mind. What's it going to be like raising a child with Down syndrome? Is he going to be made fun of at school? How delayed will he be? You have this uh, certain expectation that you're going to have this perfectly healthy child and everything's gonna be perfect, but we have a surgery we have to deal with, a newborn who's gonna be in the hospital. Just thinking about all sorts of things. We're feeling just overwhelmed, like, Lord, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get through this? This diagnosis in no way changed how we felt about our baby, how much we loved and wanted this baby. And so it grieved me to know that things were gonna be even more difficult for him in a world that is already really hard and broken. I just wanted to be able to protect this baby before he was even born. God could still have a different outcome in this scenario where Caleb could be born without Down syndrome, or the duodenal atresia would be completely healed. Is it okay to ask people to pray that he would be born free of Down syndrome? I know God's word is true, and I know he says that he will answer prayers if you ask in his name, and just kind of grappling with, well, Lord, why, why didn't you answer this one? It made me long for Jesus to come back and to not have those tears anymore. Just to be there with us in person, you know, I knew he was there. I believed that he was there, but it was, Lord, I believe, but it helped my unbelief. We were preparing Caleb's nursery and, you know, every night we would go into his room and uh, pray over him. Just ask that, you know, God would protect him and through those prayers, reminding ourselves that um, God is, is watching over our child.
the day Caleb was born, I just had a feeling of peace that everything was gonna go smoothly. And in those moments on that day, it was just the excitement and anticipation of we get to meet our baby today and we're gonna get to see this little one face to face. I was just overcome with joy, just just being able to hold them. The room was just so full of love and so full of joy. Like those things, those anxieties that we've had just faded to the wayside. It's hard to fathom God's love for us because our love for Caleb seems so overwhelming. That love became tangible and had a face and a name, and it just made the circumstances seem less overwhelming and less scary. Caleb was in the NICU for 27 days. It's just really hard to see your child, let alone your brand new baby, hooked up to all of these wires. I think we just really clung to the fact that we knew that Caleb was created in God's image and God did not make a mistake when he was creating Caleb, that he is fearfully and wonderfully made um, just like every other baby. When it was finally time to bring him home, it was kind of a, a new reality for us. Like this is this is actually what we've been waiting to do the whole time. We had gone through a lot over the past several months. And it kind of all built up to that moment of we're finally here and we're home and it was so sweet to look down and see this little one and know like when we wake up in the morning, he's gonna be there. And it was so exciting and joyful and emotional and, and just a really sweet, tender moment. We pray that he would always feel loved and valued and included. We just hope that people will see Caleb for who he is and not just see him as someone who has Down syndrome, um, but see him as a little boy who loves um, fire trucks and a little boy who loves to wrestle around with Dada. I think we're more mindful now that he has created each one of us uniquely and in his image. And every hair on his head is there for a reason. God had put it there. Even in the midst of this lifelong condition that he'll have, like there's just so much joy to be had and so much life that he has blessed him with and blessed us with. God has created him just the way he is. Not just created him, but artfully created him.